What is going on everybody? Welcome to the fifth video in parallel programming and supercomputing. In this video, and actually in the last video what we did was we just learned a couple more commands and just did some simple math just to show that it was possible. In this video we're going to learn one more command and then we're actually going to send and receive data. So that's uh, the most exciting part so far is we will finally pass a message. That's exciting. Anyway, besides just printing out stuff, I suppose. So, again, as usual, from MPI for pi and port MPI, uh, then we're going to do com equals MPI.com underscore world. If you wonder why I type this every time, it's just a good idea to get comfortable with it. If you don't want to type it every time, that's fine, but I suggest you do. Anyway, uh, rank equals com.rank. Size, again, will equal com.size. And this time we're going to learn a new one, and that's going to be name. And what this is going to return is the name of the processor. So master 001, node 002 in my case. Uh, if you haven't changed your host name, then obviously you're going to be you know, Raspberry Pi. But if you did change it, uh, you will get uh, whatever name it is. So mpi.get with a capital G underscore processor underscore name. And that will return the name. Now... What we're going to do is we're going to make a message and we're going to call this message shared. Shared is going to equal rank plus one times five. Just something nice and simple pretty much. Now what we're going to say is if rank equals zero, so a nice conditional that we've already seen, we're going to say data equals shared and now we're going to send uh, this data. So we're going to say com.send uh, and what do we want to send? We want to send data. What is the destination? So dest and that's going to equal the rank of where you want it to go. In our case that's 1. We want to send it to node 1. Now if you remember what I was mentioning in the last video was size and we can use this to conditionally uh, do some stuff. Size is a good way to condition or to conditionally configure the destination. So right now we're hard coding the destination whereas what you could do is you can combine rank and size uh, together so the destination could be um, size minus rank let's say. So you could do something like that so you can share stuff. That's really basic and obviously you would run into a problem when the destination is zero minus um, or size minus zero for example but that would be master node to master node and generally that is kind of you, you know, people would use the master node and you can also format that out but but anyway to send a message through you could do something really really simple like that or you, a lot of people would have a, a better algorithm than that but just to uh, spark your imagination of how you might might use that next up you would say so if rank is zero send that data to that destination. There's also another command that we might hit on later, and that's the tag command. And you can tag it with something. You can say, oh, this is, you know, message X. But we're not going to get into that for now. So, anyways, com.send. Um, and then let's just print out some stuff. We're going to say from rank, rank, we are, or actually, we sent data. Okay. Next, we're going to say elif rank equals 1 data equal oops, data single equal there. Data equals com.recv for receive. And where do we want to receive this from? Well, we're receiving it from source 0. So obviously rank 0 master node data is this and it's sending that data to node 1, which is a worker node. And if when this n worker node runs this script, it's going to realize it's rank one. Data is going to be com.receive source zero. And then we're going to say print on node rank. <clears throat> we received data. Okay. So uh, here we go. We're going to save this. And again, I'm going to move this to. Uh, both pies now, so SCP5. Okay, so minimize this up arrow, and I'm gonna change mine to five again. If you're not changing your file name, obviously you don't have to. Hit enter, and we run. So from rank zero, we sent a five. On node one, we received five. 
So, uh, what did I do with my script? So again, um, it was just rank plus one times five. Uh, so obviously that five makes a whole lot of sense. And so now you can see how we've shared this data between the ranks. And as you can see, not only have we just shared data, we actually shared a slightly a, a bit of an object because we shared whatever data stored. So we sent data over and then data represents whatever it represented here. So you've sent that stuff over, we've stored it in the same named variable, and we're able to obviously spit out that exact identical variable. So that's going to conclude uh, this video, and really your first example of truly sending a message over MPI and, and receiving it and all that, and then starting to use it. Obviously in this case we just printed it out, but uh, hopefully you can start to see where this might become beneficial. And just for kicks, though, what if we did something like this? What if we flip these around? So we'll say 1, 0. So in this case, and then destination 0, 1. So here, we're going to say if we're rank 1, what do we want to do? Data is equal to this. So this time it'll be rank 1 plus 1 times 5, so 10. Then it's going to send that to destination 0, which is the master node. And then L if you are the master node receive this data right so let's save that and again I'm gonna move this over and again and let's just run this one more time <clears throat> and then again it says from rank 1 we sent 10 on node 0 we received 10 so again it, it it, it was willing to wait so we can run this a few times and it could be assumed that maybe every now and then um, something is quicker than the other thing especially rank 0 right uh, node 0 in theory should be quicker than node 1 because node 0 is just trying to receive a message whereas node 1 is actually trying to calculate something and send it so you would expect that it's totally possible that um, that node 0 wouldn't have got it in time the other way and then we flipped it so where node 1 actually you know does this first and it still obviously works um, so I just wanted to bring that up but there are there will be times when you're like you're waiting for something to occur uh, so for example let us do let's say let's let's just flip this around again so I'm just gonna control Z okay so now let's import time and now if rank is zero, we're waiting to, um, or I'm sorry, the initial one was we were sending, or we were sending data to rank one, right, from zero. So now what we, what we can do instead is let's say, uh, let's just throw, before we do this, let's time sleep like five seconds. Um, we'll save that. And now let's move that over again. Close this, run it. <clears throat> okay, so now you can see that both nodes, like it literally, what it's gonna do is it's going to wait for that data. So it's going to wait to receive that data. So it's not like it's going immediately through everything. So there are going to be some times when order is somewhat important, but that's mostly for like the logistics of sending and receiving stuff and at the rate of calculation. But when it comes to actually needing to know like, well, this code has to be, you know, the send and receive has to be calculated first in time for that receive for there to be anything to be received and all that. If there's nothing there, it's just gonna it's gonna sit there and like wait. So anyway, just keep that in mind. Um, and then also, this one's becoming a little longer than I intended. But let me do this. So what if we did something like this? From rank, we sent data and we moved the sleep to after that. So now let's save and let me move this file again. So now it will have sent that data before it begins its little wait time. So, this, up arrow again. 
And you can see that what from rank zero, we sent the five, we got the five on node one. Um, and obviously we had the sleeper and that's why it took a while for this whole process to end. But again, it, it was everything was done in time. And this is a really great representation of processing that's happening still over here, even though rank one is, is reporting stuff, even though this one's over here sleeping, it's not running. So each, each node is really is running this separate script um, on each other and we're seeing, seeing the output at the same time. So anyways, just wanted to show you guys a little bit of that, how we can uh, add some stuff to it to get a better understanding of how this process actually works. Feel free to play around a little bit with it. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff, and so um, I'm kind of curious now, actually, about something. I wonder if, um, like, I wonder if you took rank, if you say, you know, we run around on three nodes, which would revert back to the master node as a worker node, and you did something like this again to it and made a sleeper, if it would continue running the script or not. I'm really curious. I don't know if I want to add that. It's a... Maybe I'll add it just, just for kicks. So let's say we'll come down here and we'll send this data to two nodes. Uh, this one will come to two. I am just really curious, sorry guys. Um, Cause I haven't actually tried this one yet. So now we'll say elif rank equals two, we'll take that, okay, cool. So now in theory, when we run this, even though we've got quote unquote three nodes, like I said to you guys, like you could do this with like making up kind of like a pseudo node. Um, when we run this, we're gonna say number of processors three and it's gonna revert to, um, and we never used our name variable. Let's go ahead and put our name variable in there just, just for kicks too, just so you can see again what, which one we're using. So node number three, rank two, should be master again. So it'll just cycle through. So anyways, let's just save this. And I'm just curious if the sleep will affect here. In theory, I, I would assume it would, but I'm curious now. So uh, let's run that. Hopefully this video isn't gonna be too long. Um, come down here, up arrow, come over here. Well, first let's just test this against, uh, yeah, let's see. Oh, invalid rank because we specified rank uh, three ranks. So we have no choice but to uh, say number of processors three. Okay. That is too cool. Okay, so <laughs> that's interesting because Python is singular threaded and it looks to me like we have passed that single thread. I'll have to use this on one of my more powerful computers and see if, if in a single script you can use MPI to um, to surpass that. So I've never, I haven't heard anybody say that they've done that so that you can use like your full CPU. Usually you use like threading or something like that. Maybe in the back end it's threading. But if you don't know what I, why I'm so happy about this is on the master um, here and here, as you can see, these are two master nodes and <clears throat> on our script here, this rank zero, which is a master node, has a command to sleep for five seconds. That's why it hangs at the end for a few seconds. Um, meanwhile, rank two is um, a master node. <clears throat> so right here, master is zero, zero, 001. So while this was sleeping, running some code in sleep time, this one still outputted the five. I am thoroughly impressed. That's interesting. That is too cool. I'm pretty excited about that. I'll have to try that with like a bigger example. I'm not really sure if that is, if I'm being fooled by something here, but it sure looks like you've got threading going on uh, when that's the case. Anyways, that's pretty exciting. I'll have to play around with that on my main computer. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, I actually enjoyed this video pretty, uh, pretty well, so <laughs> hopefully you guys did too. Uh, anyways, that's gonna conclude this video. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.